of you know unique i have not covered such things before in any of my training sessions right so probably i will try to upload these videos on youtube itself okay so uh, you know when we talk about the ips what is your normal understanding of ips so so far you must have uh, you know uh, considered ips as a intrusion prevention system okay so earlier when we were not having these next generation firewalls we used to have the dedicated blades for ips and ids functionalities intrusion prevention and intrusion detection systems so as name suggests detection is just there to detect the intrusion now what is intrusion let's take an example you have a perimeter to secure let's take an example of your home right so you must be having the perimeter boundary that this land belongs to me right and i should be covering my land either with the help of the wall or any fence so that unwanted users cannot come inside my premise without my permission and then you install a door here from where you are along the entry this is your entry and exit point and you only open doors whenever any known candidate or any known you know uh, guy or known person is coming then only you are opening doors and you are letting that person come inside this is a normal example right now just imagine you are not at home and you have kept your uh, Uh, valuable things inside your home in a locker or something like that now in your absence thieves are coming so what they will try to do either they will try to break the lock of this entry gate because you must have put a lock there because rest of the perimeter is secured with a either a concrete wall or some sort of electric fencing or something like that right so first they will try to exploit the way you have created for yourself to get inside right if that way cannot be exploited then they will find another ways to get inside because this is the entry point you must have cctv cameras here you must have high security lock right biometric based or something like that so the thief he is aware that if if he is going to use this particular passage to go inside later on he might be caught so what he will try to do he will try to find another way to get inside the home either through a window you must be having a window here so he will try to uh, you know uh use this window to get inside or he will try to break this wall and try to get inside now what do you have done to uh notify you know to get the detection let's take an example that you are prepared that in my absence i know that in my area the security is not that high and uh, thieves may jump in right they may try to uh, breach the security and they may try to come inside my Oh, so you have installed the motion detect detectors inside your home. Now these motor motion detect detectors they are continuously monitoring the area for any motion. So the moment they see any motion, you will get the notification. Right. So earlier we used to have the motion detectors. Nowadays. Uh, these motion detectors are coming inside the camera itself right so you get the notification on your mobile phone this is nothing but iot right so now such system we will call it detection that it has detected something and it has given you the notification 
So this is what your intrusion detection system is. That we will detect that somebody is trying to get inside your infrastructure or inside your network unethically. He's trying to explore the ways to get inside your network. See, uh, generally, how do we allow access to our network? So if I talk about traditional networking, at perimeter, we have a, let's take an example. You have a legacy firewall, ASA. This is your outside interface where you have configured the public IP. And then you are connected with internet and this is my port let's take an example uh, zero slash one and i'm calling it outside or interest whatever it is then you have your dmz zone where your application servers are hosted Demilitarized zone, right? And this is your web server. And then you have your more trusted zone, which we are calling inside or trust. Okay. So now, what can happen? Let's take an example that uh, you have configured the uh, access to these web servers. Let's take an example. You have uh, users who will be working from home or who will be working from uh, you know, any other location, any other uh, remote location, client location, something like that. And they would need to access their internal resources, right? So one thing is there are multiple traffic traffic flow for such topology. One traffic flow is like this. LAN users, they are accessing the internet. This is one traffic flow. And we are calling it internet facing traffic. Another traffic flow is your legitimate users users of your platform they are coming via internet and they are accessing your web server whatever application you have hosted on internet so your another traffic flow is public publicly hosted web server traffic because you want the normal users to hit this particular server from the internet and they can view whatever content you want them to display right then comes your uh, the next traffic type that is my internal traffic Let's use a different pen here. Okay. Internal traffic, or you can say the private application traffic. So let's take an example. There might be the scenario that from here, we do have these private application servers where we have hosted our uh, Salesforce. Because earlier we were not having this SaaS software as a service, right? We were having on-premise service, servers for each service, Salesforce, uh, Microsoft Exchange, right? All other services, whatever we are using today as a software, as a service that used to be hosted on-premise. So now this internal traffic is working like this. This is within a same branch. Let's take an example. This is your data center. This is my data center location. Now, similarly, you must be having other locations too, right? Uh, yeah, Pradeep. Can you mute yourself? Okay, thank you. 
so similarly you must be having other branches right and now to connect those branches you have multiple options with you one option is you can leverage the internet connectivity and you can form a ipsec tunnel right because over public media you cannot send the data right away right from security point of view let's take an example we have lan users here as well and all the servers are hosted inside your data center so now this internal traffic for this particular sales force will be coming like this this is for your branch to dc communication here if you are using the public media like internet you need to have ipsec tunnel or other tunneling protocols you need to use you cannot send data without a tunnel without any encryption so ipsec is always preferred right so we have this branch to dc uh, tunnel created by using which we can send our private application traffic securely over the public media this is one use case another use case is that instead of this internet you have also taken because you know you are the uh, you have to be fully compliant as as per the uh, client policy or as per your uh, you know uh, other certifications and you have taken up the mpls connection as well as part of your secondary van connectivity or primary van connectivity so this is your mpls right an mpls is a private cloud connectivity between one location to another location so generally we follow the hub and spoke architecture so your internal traffic will follow this path right so either you can leverage ipsec tunnel so you can create ipsec as a backup so in case mpls link goes down then i have this uh, backup route available with me and i will send my traffic by using this ipsec tunnel this is the use case for branch to dc communication now another use case comes into the picture where we need to entitle the traffic of my work from home user or remote users now how you need to provide them access of your infrastructure so the legacy way of doing this it's like this user is also connected with the internet so we can leverage the access by remote access vpn functionality ra vpn so this user will create the ssl tunnel or ipsec tunnel with this particular firewall in your data center and then he will start sending the traffic towards your internal servers and internet bound traffic if uh, split tunnel has been configured it will go direct otherwise that, that particular uh, traffic will also come to my firewall and i'll do the inspection and then i'll break it, break it out over the internet okay so same story the way i have given you the uh, uh, you know evng server access same logic applies here okay now this is the legitimate of uh, traffic shaping which you have done for your legitimate users but here we will have the bad elements or you can call them the attackers now they will try to exploit your services their aim is to disrupt your business either they will try to give you unwanted traffic so that they can bring down your web servers or they will find a way to you know uh, get inside your infrastructure and you know either disrupt your services or steal the data right so what they will do they will first try to exploit the way the uh, you know they will first try to exploit the route which you have created for your users let's take an example this lan user if he goes home 
he is taking away his laptop and he is connecting to malicious websites and from there he has downloaded this malicious software inside the laptop now this malicious virus the next day when this user will connect to the lan so this malware will try to spread across the network right it will try to broadcast itself so it can go very easily from this channel because you have the connectivity and asa being asa asa cannot do deep inspection so asa might not be able to detect this malware same story applies with this work from home user if this machine is infected then that particular malware can come into your network so here comes your ztna framework zero trust network access which says that first you need to ensure that your network should not be flat flat network means that you don't have any topology in place anyone can talk to anybody so as part of the ztna framework first we need to ensure that you have the segmentation done that this is my guest vlan this is my uh, lan user vlan this is my hr department finance department id department right and whenever there any cross department communication is happening we have a you know firewall in place or any uh, next generation firewall in place to do the inspection on that particular traffic we need to basically minimize the attack surface right now you can see in above topology my attack surface is wide open anyone can go anywhere there is no restriction in place so first we need to break down this flat network into a highly segmented network where we will define that this user should be able to access these resources only not more than that so that if any machine is getting compromised that machine should not be able to damage other infrastructure resources then user should be given access to the applications which are required as per their business to support business as usual so let's take an example if you are from the hr department you should be able to get access only to hr related applications which are running in your data center not all the applications so that if your machine is also getting infected only those applications they become vulnerable not the entire infrastructure state become uh, vulnerable okay so then uh, you know earlier what we used to do is inside your uh, data center we used to have the heavy security stack and that stack was like something uh, you know you used to have the uh, vpn concentrator you you used to have the dedicated utm box you used to have the dedicated uh, you know proxy setups or you can say the web application firewalls uh, or web sense appliance wsa you used to have uh, ips intrusion prevention blades detection blades load balancers your wan bandwidth optimization riverbed sort of things so many devices in the networking uh, architecture and we are already aware that if any device is doing processing on a packet it is going to add some sort of latency and that's why this model was highly uh, you know uh, you can say the highly uh, worst performant network because your entire traffic either getting backhaul to the dc so you have the dc and all your branches if they want to communicate to internet so what people used to do they were taking the mpls connectivity and they were following this uh, hub and spoke architecture and if you want to go to internet 
all these branches they are sending their entire traffic towards the data center be it internal applications external applications everything was coming on dc in dc you were having these internet links and you were having these firewalls where you were doing the inspection and sending this traffic out from the dc location now such scenario it's like you know you need to have high bandwidth you need to procure high bandwidth from the isp you need to have heavy equipments in your data center location and in case your data center goes down then we used to uh, create a dr location this is how it used to be earlier but nowadays your applications are moving on cloud now we we, we are moving this legacy architecture towards the cloud based architecture where we have the hyperscalers like aws gcp azure we have other players too in the market but these are the main hyperscalers so now what is happening you have your data center location you have your cloud location you are also using saas based applications your users are coming from the branches your users are working from home and everyone is using transmitting media as internet so these all entities they are connected via internet and if you are connected via public medium whatever data flow uh, you know whatever traffic you are forwarding back and forth either it it is from work from home user towards the dc or from dc towards the work from home user or from branches towards the dc and from dc towards the branches right or directly user from branches going to the saas application like uh, ms teams right now we are connected through ms teams this is nothing but a uh, saas based application so entire traffic entire uh, you know uh, system the a uh, tenant has been hosted on microsoft cloud right and our call our screen share everything is working properly earlier it used to be like you you need to have the pbx systems inside your infrastructure you need to you know deploy your uh, voice gateways and all that stuff inside your uh, infrastructure to connect like this but these days it's like you know you can connect anywhere by using such softwares so this is software as a service similarly few workloads you have hosted on your cloud right and you are communicating with your cloud back and forth so what do you mean by workloads workloads are nothing but your servers your crm softwares right your hr hr softwares whatever it is your internal applications external so few applications are still in the dc and most of the applications are in cloud so this type of deployment we call it hybrid deployment where you do have presence in data center as well as in cloud but these days whenever a new startup is coming up that startup is preferring to have the data center over cloud only so these startups are cloud driven and internet driven companies they don't take p2p connection they don't take uh, mpls connections they directly take internet as their underlay and they try to communicate with their resources so if you are going public you need to secure your infrastructure otherwise uh, hackers will exploit the uh, entry exit points and they will damage your resources so here comes your next generation firewall feature or uh, you know next generation firewalls and uh, sasi based technologies secure access service edge and that too we have uh, sd wan and 
SSE. These scalar nets go Prisma axis. Okay. So now in your next generation firewall, where you can put your next generation firewall, you can put your next generation firewall in data center. You can put your next generation firewall in cloud, right? You can put your next generation firewall in branches, right? And you can install the uh, client connectors in the user machines, right? To secure this communication. But what about your vendors, contractors? They are also communicating with your, uh, you know, application servers. So whether you are going to install some sort of uh, client in their laptops though, so that they can connect over SSL VPN, IPsec VPN, right? So now the attack landscape is very big. It is not confined anymore. Earlier, the challenge was like flat network you need to deal with. But these days, challenge is like you don't know the traffic flow. People are communicating anywhere. It's like any to any topology these days, full mesh. Earlier, we were having a hub and spoke, so we were aware of the traffic flow. Now, if I will talk about today's scenario from your laptop, if you're working from the office, you have three types of traffic. First, internet based applications, it will be Facebook. Cisco, whatever it is, normal internet web browsing or uh, internet bound applications. Then you have SaaS based applications like MS Teams, Office 365, complete uh, Microsoft Suite, right? And Salesforce. These are your SaaS based applications. Then you have your internal applications private traffic, your custom websites. Let's take an example, uh, human resource management system, HRMS, your uh, employee performance management system. Then you have uh, payroll related systems. These are your internal systems. And you need to protect these systems. Otherwise, hackers will be able to steal the information about your employees, their bank details, their uh, personal details, and then they can use that in, uh, information for their uh, further destruction, destructive ideas. So in IPS, Earlier, we were having the dedicated blades, but nowadays, in the same box, you are getting all the functionality. So, if I will talk about SD WAN technology these days, or if I will talk about the SD WAN OEMs, let's say Cisco, Fortinet, Palo Alto. So, now you can see that security vendors are also coming into this space, right? Velo Cloud, VMware, Versa, Silver Peak, Miraki. Right? These are your major SD WAN players. Now, this SD WAN player, if you will see, these boxes are becoming the exit point for any branch these days. So let's take an example. This is my brand location. So this SD WAN box sitting here is becoming the exit point because earlier we used to have the firewalls here. So earlier your legacy environment was like this over branches because I've done multiple deployments in my career before. So there what we used to do, we used to provision one MPLS circuit and one internet circuit on any given branch. So MPLS circuit for private connectivity and internet circuit for internet related traffic. And that too, if customer is very, uh, you know, uh, rich in budget. So we used to give uh, dual MPLS connectivity, dual devices, dual ILL connectivity, dual firewalls, right? A complete redundant uh, topology so that in any, any case, the connectivity will not go down for that particular branch. 
right? So we used to have these MPLS circuit, ILL circuits. Then uh, you were having, uh, you know, the MPLS router. Uh, this is your P router. This is your C router. VGP neighborship is done. Then uh, we used to provision the firewall here, right? And then comes your uh, load balancer, or let's take an example, bandwidth optimization device, Riverbed, right? Then we used to have the uh, bandwidth segregator device like Ipanema to optimize or to prioritize your business applications, right? Then you used to have your switches and your users. This was the typical topology. And if my traffic is towards the data center, it was taking this MPLS path. And if it, this traffic is related to internet, then it was taking this path. But nowadays, with the help of the SD-WAN device, all these features were getting us in a single box. So now you can directly terminate your MPLS circuit as well as your ILL circuit on a same box. Or if you don't want to use MPLS, you can go purely with ILL circuits. Still, MPLS is there because, you know, voice traffic, for uh, voice traffic to work properly, you need to have a controlled latency, jitter, and packet loss. Over internet, you cannot control these three parameters. So that's why uh, for Common uh, organizations like uh, BPO organizations, where calling is the major business, they will always have MPLS. And another thing is in India, as per the DOT guidelines, you cannot send the voice traffic over internet links. You need to use the private channel for that. If you are connecting with PSTN network. Right, but in US, you can send the uh, voice traffic over internet. There is no problem. So, as per the land of law, you know you need to follow the compliance. So, if you are using this SD WAN device, this SD WAN device is becoming the entry and exit point. So now this topology is very simple. SD WAN device, then we have switch, and then your LAN infrastructure, right? As simple as that. Now I can build the SD-WAN fabric for my uh, private connectivity, and I can build this, uh, you know, uh, SESI bound tunnels with Z scalar, Prisma axis for my inspection related things. So basically, what you are doing, you have offloaded your security thing as well from branch to a cloud. But these days, you know, customers are also prefer preferring to have everything on this box. So whatever SD-WAN OEM, why Fortinet SD-WAN is gaining market? There is a reason behind that. So the reason is this Fortinet comes from the security background. So they are strong in security as well as their SD-WAN is also, uh, I would not say it is five out of five, but it is 3.5 out of 5, which is better than Prisma SD-WAN, which is from Palo Alto, right? So still Fortinet firewall, uh, Fortinet SD-WAN, same firewall is behaving like a SD-WAN router as well as your next generation firewall. So all the features, web filtering, IPS, IDS, you know, uh, spyware filtering, everything. You, you're getting everything in just a single box. So now, as part of the cost optimization, customers are preferring to have such boxes in the branches. Right? And we are calling it secure SD-WAN. Why secure SD-WAN? Because, see, when you when you're building this SD-WAN fabric, so this is your branch. Where you are building this SD-WAN fabric. SD-WAN fabric is nothing but your IPsec tunnels with other uh, boxes, SD-WAN boxes. 
and uh, you are having this uh, ssc z scalar red scope or prisma axis right and this is your data center Now this DC could be your uh, cloud location or on-premise or hybrid deployment, whatever it is, on-prem or cloud. Your workloads are hosted in DC, right? So my private applications will follow this path. And my internet bound traffic will follow this path. And my SaaS based traffic is also following this path. So this is SaaS. This is internet and this is private red line. But here the problem is, let's take an example. We have a user sitting in LAN and this gentleman, when he walks out from the office, he's going home. He's free to connect his laptop to the internet and download anything because we don't have any endpoint security solution in place. It could be uh, CrowdStrike, it could be Cortex XDR, right? From Palo Alto, Sentinel One, multiple uh, endpoint security solutions are available. So, which means that you don't have any measure to control the activities of this user. This user can connect to the internet at home and can download anything. And if he's trying to download the infected files, and let's say this machine has been compromised. Then again, we are back to the uh, ground situation where this malware is free to travel this path and this malware can go to DC as well and will try to encrypt your application servers. And if your application servers are down, your business is impacted. Now to deal such situations, we need to do inspection here as well. So if customer is having firewalls here after SD-WAN device and whatever traffic is hitting the application server, it is getting inspected by the firewall, then you can avoid next generation firewall features from this device. If customer is not having any firewall, he is taking complete SD-WAN solution from you, then you need to ensure that you give the solution which is having security features, next generation firewall features inside it. Now, when we talk about the next generation firewall features, so the main feature which is important, that is your IPS, intrusion prevention system. Now, see, detection is just going, going to give you the notification. Does it going to prevent the intrusion? If I'm getting the notification that, that thieves are inside my home, what, what I'm going to do is, I'll take the action afterwards because they have uh, breached the security systems. They are inside home. They have done the theft. They are gone now. And afterwards, I'll take the uh, appropriate, uh, you know, security measures or you can say the appropriate channels to uh, catch them, right? That will be a reactive approach. IPS gives you proactive approach. Proactive means that if somebody is trying to do a intrusion in your secured premise, they should not be able to do that. Let's take an example. Earlier, we have taken the example of main door where you have deployed the heavy security uh, systems. The attacker was not able to get inside the home because they were having the uh, you know uh, heavy security systems deployed. They exploited this window. Now what you have done, you have also implemented heavy security systems on these windows as well, wherever you have windows in your home. Now these attackers, they cannot even exploit these windows to get inside your home. So you are preventing the attacks, right? They are coming, these uh, thieves, they are coming daily at your home premise, but they are not able to get inside. This is what your IPS is, preventing the real-time attacks. 
it is a proactive approach so we are stopping here for a dinner break and right after dinner break we'll continue from here these three four classes is going to be very unique because i have never covered uh, uh, such details in any of my previous lectures so these three four classes will be like uh, first time you guys will be getting it from me okay so if you have any doubt anything you can let me know and you can ask here